If you have been following along, then you know that I've traded in my beloved Honda Fury for a much bigger bike. A much more powerful bike. The most powerful? Oh wait, this is not that story. Before I unveil the new hotness, I have to set the Wayback Machine to last month, to a demo event for CF Moto. As you know, I'm not tatted to one particular brand of bike, but a new brand of motorcycle, and one from China no less, is raising a few eyebrows. Can a Chinese motorcycle brand live up to American quality? Let's find out. CF Moto won't let me film the rides though. Funny, Indian will, and encouraged it. But that's a spoiler for another video and a reason to subscribe so you won't miss it. Hello again, you are riding with Marshall one more time. Thank you very much for joining me. And we are at uh, the same place I've been at for the last couple videos because every weekend has been a new demo event. And this one I've been looking forward to all summer. This is, oh, where am I again? Okay, Cheyenne Motorsports. So this is the last demo event of the summer though, and then we gotta move on to other demo events or better yet, people just loan me their bikes. So uh, this event today is CF Moto. So CF Moto, you might be, uh, you might have heard of them, you might not. They're a Chinese manufacturer. Yes, a Chinese motorcycle manufacturer hitting the states and being available at dealers. In fact, this dealer carries them. So, taking a quick look at what we have here. We have an NK800, which I really should ride. An NK300. A 450SS sport bike. The one I'm riding next, which obviously means uh, there will be a slight review. A CLX. Look at the pipe on that. So you're exploring these with me. I know a little bit about them, and that means nothing to you. But that's the next one. They have a high bar and a low bar, so this is the standard, I believe the standard bar. So yes, yeah, CLX 700. This is the one I just rode, of which we'll talk about in a minute. The 450 NK. And I have to say it was fantastic. Spoiler alert. I'm usually not a big fan of street brawlers, but uh, this one, yeah, it was very engaging. Engaging is good. Another NK. Another fourth, here's a 450 SS for those that dig sport bikes. Another 300 SS. And then we have the Ibex 800. I'll go to the other one. So the Ibex 800 is the one I really wanted to, to ride because the adventure, uh, the adventure series of bikes has really taken off. It's kind of where it's at. A lot of people are leaving their cruisers behind. A lot of people are switching to adventure bikes because they're lighter, more maneuverable, and easy to take on dirt roads. So uh, this is the Ibex 800 Tour. And the previous model, which was the non-tour, the sport model, I guess, I don't know, has been discontinued. So this is the king of the hill for CF Moto. And I have ridden it. So you get an engine that's pretty much a almost copy of a KTM 790, but I believe it's detuned from my riding experience on it because uh, it was very well mannered, so to speak. Here's what you need to know before buying an Ibex 800. It has two modes, rain mode and sport mode, and in sport mode, the clutch, when you release it, all the torque of first gear is right there, so be ready for it to launch. Now, what I mean by that is, 
after it launches, you're spent on first, switch to second. <laughs> There's no more torque left. So for an adventure bike, that could be a downside if you're in the dirt. It's very uh, launchy, would be my term for the first gear. You might call it snatchy, uh, whatever you want, but um, releasing it in first gear, do it slowly because uh, it just grips and goes. That said, everything else about it is wonderful. If you follow me, you know I can be a little harsh. I simply don't want to give you false expectations of any man-made contrivance, as no motorcycle is perfect, and you can count on me to find the flaws. When you've ridden over 170 bikes, you tend to get a bit picky. Here's what you need to know about the Ibex 800T, both good and bad. Let's keep in mind the MSRP is only 10799 in the U.S. Why don't we just call it 108? Come on, guys. It's a great looking bike. The angry mountain goat look works for it. See a resemblance? Yes, an Ibex is a mountain goat. Would I take this bike into the fire roads of the mountains or a BDR? Well, any bike can be a dirt bike if you try hard enough, but the lack of an off-road mode means you have the ABS and traction control on all the time. Remember, two ride modes. It has sport and rain, neither of which is ideal for getting you out of sand or mud. That abrupt throttle in the low gears leaves you with very little feathering space. I have heard there is a remap available to fix that, though. You still get a lot for the money. There are not many bikes under 11,000 that offer all of this. Things like LED lights all the way around, fog lights included. An easy to read display, when it's clean anyway, it rained yesterday. Bluetooth and CF Moto ride app. The clutch and brake lines are braided shielded, nice touch. It has cruise control and heated grips and seat. Take that, Honda. Show me those on the Transalp. Spoked tubeless wheels with a two-piston rear brake and four in the front on a 19-inch front wheel. ABS and quartering ABS. Built-in crash bars, like the horns of an Ibex. And a belly pan included. Completely adjustable suspension. A quick shifter and center stand. A five-gallon tank that should take you over 200 miles. A comfortable seat at 32 and a half inches. Now that's moderately tall, but reasonable height for anyone that's 5 foot 10. That's 178 centimeters for you other folks. The engine. It's a liquid cooled inline twin with eight valves, dual overhead cams, 799 cc, and mated to a slipper clutch. It puts out 94 horsepower at 9,000 RPMs and only 56.8 foot-pounds of torque. So, I've heard it said, it's just a KTM 790 though, right? No, its mapping is different, and I was a little disappointed. I've ridden a KTM 790 and they pull, and just when you think you've reached the top of the power curve, they pull some more. Oh, it's sporty. The Ibex reaches a plateau pretty fast, and then crickets. It seems to miss out on the liveliness of the KTM, so something is different here. Maybe the fueling remap will fix it. Now that's about all I can tell you from an 8 mile demo ride or so. I think it was 8 miles. In summary, the looks, fit and finish are fine. The features you get for the money are absolutely astounding. But the clutch friction zone is really abrupt, and the engine is tuned for, what, fuel economy? I'm not really sure. Are the other CF Moto bikes tuned like this? No. So stay tuned. So next up, we have the 
CF Moto 450NK. After the ho hum performance of the Ibex, I was shocked and surprised with the performance of the NK. It's basically a track bike. Does the NK stand for naked? If so, then I'm in. This little rabble rouser has a 450cc parallel twin engine with 50 horsepower at 9500. Yes, it is fun to high rev that motor. The torque is only 28.8 foot pounds, but the bike weighs under 400 pounds wet. So how much do you really need? This engine rocks. It can be more thrilling to ring out a small engine than never fully opening a big one. Just like the Ibex, it has excellent brakes, traction control, and for some reason, Bluetooth connectivity. The seat is 31 and a half inches of height. Does that include this wrinkle? What's with the wrinkly cover? That is the only quality issue I found. Still, for a price that's in the Royal Enfield playbook of $53.99, it's a lot of fun for the moolah. Here's one I really enjoyed as well, the 700 CLX. It's a little more me-fashioned, like they saw me coming. It's a little fatter, a little more multi-purpose, and a little more resembling something else on the lot. What do you think? The 700 CLX has a sport version and a standard, and as far as I can tell, the sport just has lower bars, different rims, and a capped off rear seat. They both have 693cc inline twin with dual overhead cams, 74 horsepower at 8500 RPM, 50.2 pounds of foot pounds of torque, and a six speed gearbox with slipper clutch. Add to that cruise control and the ride modes of Eco, Sport, and what is this one on the hand grips that's not mentioned in the specs? Off road? Where is that on the Ibex? Did they get the parts bins mixed up? The Ibex needs an off-road mode. The CLX has a 3.4 gallon tank, kind of similar to that other bike, and weighs 441 pounds. It's a solid performer though. The last bike is something my buddy Jeff said I had to ride. Just had to. He gets me into all kinds of trouble. No, not the one he's sitting on. I have to ride the Papio. I wish I had a video of me riding it. Eight miles of trying to keep up with, well, everyone, including Jeff. I weigh more than he does. The little Papio is CF Moto's answer to the Honda Grom. It is an air-cooled single 126cc with a whopping 9.4 horsepower and 6.8 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, that's single digits if you're counting whole numbers. I used all of this trying to keep up with the demo pack. I downshifted, wrung it out, upshifted, wrung it out. It didn't matter. <laughs> I gave her all she's got, Captain. The bike weighs 50 pounds less than me, and that's all I'm saying. For what it is meant to be, it pulls it off well. It just happens to be the smallest bike I've ridden since my 100th, which was a Honda Monkey. It's a perfect bike for city use, though. Well, there are my first thoughts on a handful of CF Moto. As a company, CF Moto has been around since 1989 and made many Moto parts. As their first few years in making motorcycles go, I think they are catching on. Thanks for putting up with me and watching my verbal drivel. Subscribe to see more reviews.